And now let's get into that first story. You know, when I first saw this this morning, the story about the, them leaking text messages, I got really angry because I am disgusted by these establishment shills, these disgusting, vile creatures of Congress. They are, they are, they are ca- cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers who have lurched up from the underground, crawled into Congress, and we just sit back and we're like, yeah, I guess we'll keep voting for these people. But hopefully now people are waking up and they will vote out all of these people, especially people like Liz Cheney. From the story from The Independent, Donald Trump Jr. sent desperate texts to Mark Meadows during Capitol riot, urging Trump to take action. He has to lead now. Revelation of texts come as committee votes to support contempt of Congress charge for former chief of staff. Did I say these people are absolutely vile and disgusting? Because I'll just keep saying it. Now, that being said, the release of these texts, Donald Trump Jr. was urging Mark Meadows to get his dad to condemn the riot at the Capitol. Sounds like they did not want it to happen. Sounds like all of these people in Trump's inner circle were like, yo, stop this. And then Trump came out and issued a statement saying that it was wrong and to go home, go home peacefully. So they just effectively debunked their whole narrative. If that's the case, why should any of this continue? Total clown show. I mean, in a, in a moral civilization, a moral America, Liz Cheney would be shunned from society. I see her picture on the screen there. Uh, as a foreign policy guy, I, I can tell you all the all the wars she supported, all the military armament uh, for the military industrial complex, for for all of these special interests. Liz Cheney has the worst of the worst record, and the idea that she's like playing along it, it shows that there's really there, there's two parties in, in America. There's the Uniparty represented by Liz Cheney. <laughs> um, she is a member in good standing. Unfortunately, most of the establishment Republicans and people in charge are also part of that Uniparty. And then you have Nancy Pelosi. And this January 6th committee is uh, utterly, utterly ridiculous. And, and the fact that she's like supposed to be like the Republican side making it authentic, it, it's absurd. They're like bipartisan support for, mm-hmm. you know, uh, contempt of Congress or whatever. The text messages don't really prove an insurrection. <laughs> More about everyone kind of panicking, be like, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. So it's just absurd to see them still complaining because this obviously disproves everything that they were talking about. They claimed that this was orchestrated, this was all planned. They try to take, uh, obviously through the text messages, this is not true. We're also learning today that a DC, that the DC Attorney General is going to be, is going to be suing the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers because of the January 6th attack. So... To me, this is all about just the total dominance of political power in the establishment to keep it with themselves and to make sure that, of course, Trump doesn't have any political power going forward in the next uh, election. There's also going to be local elections, and I think they're just kind of fishing for whatever they could get so they could hit the other side. The other side isn't just as, as good. Again, it's all about power. It's all about authority, and they're trying to consolidate as much of it as they can, and it's absolutely authoritarian than it is investigating at all. If we're going to investigate somebody, why not get the text messages of, you know, Mr. Epstein or Ghislaine Maxwell? Let's release that to the general public or the videos or the footage that the FBI is holding to themselves. I would want to know that. I don't care what these people are doing freaking out. 